Welcome to the next lecture of our course marking with wiremark.net and in this lecture we'll be talking about proxying in wiremark.net. So what is this proxying? Wiremark proxying is a way in which the incoming request will be routed through wiremark to a real server and optionally capturing and recording interaction between the client and the server. That's what really happens while you try to do a proxy operation. If you think this diagram as you can see over here doesn't make any sense or this particular sentence doesn't give you any idea, this diagram will help you understand things even more better. So as you can see over here for the proxying, we have got a client application and if it tries to send a request, it actually tries to send a request to the wiremark.net server because now wiremark.net is doing a proxy operation. And this wiremark.net server will then send an actual request. So basically it intercepts the request and then send it to the real server, which is the API server. And then it also receives the response after forwarding the request. And then it sends the response back to the client application. And while it does that, it also records the request and optionally saves the request and responses into a mapping file. So we can do that as well. And if you can remember in our earlier videos of this particular section series, you also know that we could able to save all the mapping into a physical file, which can then be replayed while we try to use it via the wiremark in the .NET tools. So those things we can do it as well. So all these things is super possible with wiremark.net and that's exactly what proxying really means. And that is what we are going to see in this particular video, like how we can achieve this particular operation. Well, as I said, in order to understand the proxying functionality, first of all, we need to ensure that we can first capture the request and responses from the actual application. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to stop our existing execution that we were doing. And I'm going to stop this particular wiremark.net uh, inspector as well. And guess what? This time I'm actually going to show you an application which is built using ASP.NET and also uses the web API as well as the web UI. And this is the application which I have used prevalently in most of my courses in Udemy. So if you just go and search for Udemy Karthik, and if you just go to my courses list, like automation framework development with Playwright in C-sharp.net or API testing with rest -sharp along with framework development, end-to-end -end testing with Playwright and automation framework development in Selenium C-sharp, and even for the microservice development as well as the advanced automation testing of modern apps with csharp.net, I have used this particular application quite a lot. So basically this application will help you understand how it is going to help you understand the proxying functionality. So basically I'm going to run this particular application. So in order to do that, let me quickly run this application with both the web as well as the uh, API. So if I just run this particular application, you will notice that it is going to launch a web UI as well as a Swagger documentation for the API. And if I hit this particular product, you will see that it's going to show me all the products available for this particular application. And these products are actually coming from this particular controller endpoint, which is the get products endpoint. So if I just hit execute, you will see that all these four products are going to come up, which is going to be exactly the same product. So all the UI data that you are seeing over here is coming from this particular API, which is the middleware of this particular functionality, which is happening at the moment. And the backend of this particular application is a SQLite database server. So I'm actually using that behind the scene. Well, this is the three tier application as you got it by seeing them instantly. And now the idea is we're going to proxy all the requests going from this application to call this particular API into wiremark.net server. So how do I actually do that? So you'll notice that every time when I call this product endpoint, it is going to be calling the local host of 8001 behind the scene which is then going to give me the response and the UI is going to be rendering the particular response for us over here. Now this is the URL or the API, which I need to proxy into my wiremark.net. And I will show you how we can actually do that. So in order to do that, I'm going to stop this whole debugging operation at the moment. And I'm going to go to our wiremark.net server, which we have been using all these days over here. And over here, I'm actually going to make some modification to this wiremark.net server to make sure that it also does the proxying operation. 
So the way it is going to do the proxying operation is using a proxy and record setting property. So this proxying and record settings property will then help you perform all the operation that we are looking for. So as you can see, I'm just going to create this uh, property over here. And within this particular proxy and record settings, you can see there are many different properties as well available over here. And one of them, which I'm going to be using is going to be the URL property. And here is where I'm actually going to proxy the port number localhost of colon 8001, which is nothing but the application which we are running over here, the product API that we are running here. So that is what I'm trying to do the proxy recording. And once this is recorded, I'm also going to save the mapping. So I'm going to set this to true. And I'm also going to save the mapping to a file over here. So these are the two things which I wanted to do. And just for the sake of the viewability purpose or the visibility purpose, I am also going to add another option called as logger within my wiremark.net server which is then going to help me create some logging operation, which you can see as a verbose operation within the console. So I'm going to call the wiremock console logger, which is this one, which does those magics for me behind the scene, right? So I'm going to save this guy and I'm going to start doing the recording. So guess what? Just for this particular sake of simplicity purpose, I'm going to comment the entire code that you are seeing over here because we don't really require these mappings to be mapped at all. So I'm going to just uh, comment all these code, something like this. And over here, I'm going to write the logging operation. So basically, I'm going to say I need to do a console dot write line of the server, oh, sorry, not the server, but I need to do a JSON convert, which is basically going to be from the Newton's of JSON. And I'm going to do a serialized object where I'm going to say server dot logger or maybe the log entries. And I'm going to do the formatting as intended over here. So this is going to be giving me all the uh, logging of the mapping which is going to be happening behind the scene. So you can see how awesome it is while you have a look at it. So I'm going to save this whole code and I'm going to start running this particular mock server.net over here. But before I do that, I just want to ensure you to just go through all the discussions that we have did so far. Just try to conceive all of them together. In the next lecture, as a continuation of this particular video, we are going to see how we can achieve the whole entire proxy operation in an action in our next video. So just stay tuned for that.